Hey, our review family, keep it, I keep it time. My name is Jay Morse, the review guy, reviewing music for the love of music, and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be covering the new Loathe record entitled, I Let It In, and it took everything. So these guys are coming straight out of Liverpool, England. They were formed in 2014. This is their second studio-length album following 2017's The Cold Sun. I remember being into that record quite a bit when it came out, although it's dulled a bit for some reason in my mind. Genty mathcore riffs that sounded erratic and off-kilter, a lot of Dillinger escape plan influence coming in there as well, mostly in the strange patterns, the unusual riffage. Loath took it a step further Further, though on their last record. With their sound, they incorporated riffs that weren't too unlike some of the heavier new metal bands, whether you're talking about Slipknot or early era Linkin Park, like Hybrid Theory era. Somewhat like Northlane, think of their album last year. These three styles of mathcore, gent, and new metal really bled together and shrieked out in unison in an electric way. And the vocals on that album would even reach some of the timbres that Chester Bennington would. This album, though, in my opinion, is everything that that album was just tweaked so finely and refined in general that it is better. Naturally, blunt as can be, it's better. There is a frantic energy to this record that feels like it has no potential whatsoever of letting up. But believe me when I say there's a deft and meticulous measurement given towards each of these tracks that transcend the chaos on the surface. And for all the noise they muster up on these mathcore titans, they do pack in quite a few interludes to buffer the whole thing. The deepened, low-key, ambient interlude, 451 days, I wish it was longer, because in a very short span of time, not even getting to the two minute mark, it's one of my favorite tracks on the whole album, and I mean that. It's effervescent and magical. And this track leads into New Faces in the Dark, which starts with a melodic guitar intro. And that's something that I really do want to note, is how they do blend these styles quite often on this record. It's not just a chug fest. For example, Red Room has the same interlude feel of 451 Days, but it soon grows into a monster. It feels uncontained and restrained at the same time, which might sound contradicting, but it works. Simultaneously, the aura that this track exudes is like it is being kept, and it could feel like it could burst at the seams at any second, but it's so outward and so in your face that it is bloodthirsty and about to choke you out. And it is exactly as long as it needs to be. Faded out background vocals thrust you right into this noise and doom influence breakdown that it can't get enough of. It, the guitars are just spazzing out so much in this section. It feels like the strings are popping out and flying all over the place in every tuning that you could possibly imagine. And it's hard to explain the crescendo of this track, but the best way I can explain it, it is a combination of heavy machinery going off in a plant all at once and a 50-piece percussion band banging as hard as they can on their drums in an empty warehouse or cathedral with natural reverb. Now I understand I've spotlit the heavier sections of this record, but the dulcet tones of this record really do illuminate a comprehensive look at how dynamic this band really can be. Even though this record has more of a melodic edge to it, I enjoy this record for a lot of the same reasons that I enjoyed that Car Bomb record last year, Mordial. And in many forms, it's an experience. The floating instrumentation of the track Two-Way Mirror swirls around like a vortex that is just out of reach but just about to swallow you whole. There's a pattern of percussion that is simple, gentle, unassuming, padding along, but there's something intoxicating to the way it all comes across, same with the riffage on this track. And even in the chorus, when everything gets more powerful to accompany the vocals, they don't get overly rambunctious, they don't get overly loud or distorted at all. It's like the previous soundscapes just sort of fade away into the ethosphere. Even the vocals maintain this calm demeanor, they're hushed and forlorn, uncaring and melancholic. And I haven't even really mentioned the tracks that do both heavy and soft, which there are many of them, just like their previous record. I just think it comes across better a lot of times. I'll be the first to say that on the second track, Aggressive Evolution, I'm not the biggest fan of the transition from verse to chorus because it is very sudden. And I'll also go on the record saying I don't think it's one of their strongest courses they've ever done in their career. But I do respect how quickly they are able to transition from section to section 
They never really bleed together, they just sound like co-conspirators in this rageful dance. I mean, for the most part, Loathe really did craft a great record that builds on the stepping stones that their past record left for them. It's like that record walked so this one could run. And in many ways, I just hope that they continue to refine their sound. If I could complain about, I guess, one thing, uh, the mathcore bits can be a little bit too Dillinger Escape Plan and do feel a lot like some of the classic mathcore and math rock bands when it comes to the riff writing. And even though it does muster up a lot of noise and a lot of havoc, it doesn't necessarily feel the most unique. But that's just talking face value. The compositions themselves are very well orchestrated, very well put together. They're enveloping and the production makes sure that everything just comes together to create this massive play that's bigger than the sum of its parts on its own. And yeah, I'm just excited to see what the band can do in the future. I'm really loving this record. I'm going to be giving it an 8 out of 10. And that is a wrap. Have you heard this new Loathe record? I let it in and it took everything. If you have, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. I would love to discuss the record with you. Be sure to stay for the end screen. I will link some videos that you might be interested in. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy, and I'm signing off saying fair well. Go ahead, live your best life.